All right, I'll ask a different question for the whole panel going around the table. Do you think you'll be better looking in 10 years as compared to how you look now, starting with you? Yes. Okay, so you're 19, you'll be better looking at 29. Yeah. Uh, what about 39 compared to 19? I hope so. You hope so? Better? I hope will I you? will look better. So, but will you be more physically attractive at 39 than you are now at 19? So abstracting all other qualities and talking about physical attractiveness? Appearance? Yeah. Okay. Probably I am more interactive now than I would be, but I would say I'm going to be a babushka at 39. <laughs> good choice. All right. But so more attractive at 29, but not more attractive at 39. Yeah, yes. Okay, so we're talking about objective, I don't know, people's soci societal kind of standards here. Of yeah, so let's assume you're in the motherland, motherland on the it? standards of the motherland. There, they are Fatherland. judging your beauty standards, mm -hmm. right? They're judging you currently versus you at 29 years old. Which would all of the men in the motherland prefer? My younger version? Yeah, that seems fair. Okay, so then there's wait, no way you're going to be more attractive than we should, at let's, 29. Let, let's, than let's get all the answers. Would I be more attractive yeah, at Yes, so you're 23. Years? Do you think you'll be more attractive at 33? I mean, I would... I would hope so. Do you think yeah. you'll be more physically attractive at 33 than you are now at 23? Possibly. I don't... I think so, yeah. What about 43? Well, as you grow older, I mean, age just catches up to you. Maybe maybe not to other people. But you think you will peak at 33 as compared to now at 23? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you don't know. <laughs> so can I just get a yes or no? Will you be more physically attractive in 10 years' time? It just depends, I mean. On? What? Because it could be a whole different standard in 10 years of what people think is beautiful. In my eyes, I'm going to still be confident that, yeah, I am beautiful. Maybe I'm going to have kids, and maybe my body's going to look a little bit different um, in that sense. We're so. not saying that you won't be beautiful in 10 years. We're yeah. asking if you'll be more beautiful in 10 years than you are now. No, I think I'll be the same. You'll be the same. Yeah. No difference. What about 43? Same, yeah. So you will be just as physically attractive at 43 years old than oh, you are... It, like... Um, what did you I think mean, I was talking about? I mean, just... I don't know. Just, I think I'm going to be... Okay, you're saying looks. I keep on yes, wanting looks. to pull into, like, emotions and all that stuff. So, maybe no, I'm not at 43. Okay. So then 33? No. Let's just say no. Okay, but I'll actually engage with you on this incorporating other things. So if we just look at the totality of everything, do you think you will overall be more attractive to all men at 33? You'll be more attractive at 33 than you are now at 23. Yeah. If I'm still going down the same route that I am, like improving myself and growing myself, then yeah, I will be, but I mean, I don't need the approval of like, all the men is just gonna be whoever my husband is. Right, but so the question is like, to be attractive mm -hmm. to men. And right. if I continue going the path, which hopefully okay. God willing what I am. What about 43 then? The same thing, 53? continuing on. 53, 63. <clears throat> yes, if we're incorporating everything emotionally, yes, everything. How You'll be more, more but, but you acknowledge that physical attractiveness is a component of it. I'm not asking yeah. just, but you would acknowledge that it's a component. But you're like even saying like it's to all men, like it's just one person. Maybe our physical attraction for each other is going to be like, oh, you're getting like wrinkly and stuff and so on. Like, so be it. Okay. So Maybe the physical scenario, is probably going to drop, but hopefully the emotional rises up. In this scenario, let's assume you get divorced, but you've made all that. the progress <laughs> that you claim you will make in 20 years time. Mm -hmm. You get divorced at 43. Mm -hmm. Will you have a better time attracting men? at 43 than you will now at 23. Mm -hmm. That one man you talk about is gone and now you're back in the dating marketplace. I mean, if that guy was a me, hopefully there'll be one who's gonna want to be with me. I'm asking, I'm setting up a hypothetical here. Yeah. You get divorced. You did have the one guy, the one mm -hmm. guy's gone. You're now back on Tinder and Hinge <laughs> and dating apps and you're being, there's multiple men who are gonna be mm -hmm. pursuing you. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that you will be more attractive in totality at 43 to these men than you are now at 23. 
No, because it, like you said, if the physical probably will drop. Just it, and like I said, it depends on like what no, but they're I looking granted for. In totality. Yeah, but it's like it depends what the guy is looking for as well. Okay. All right. You're 26. Better looking at 30. Will you be better looking at 36 than you are now at 26? I absolutely plan on being that, and mm-hmm. I have it. I absolutely plan on being more physically more attractive more physically. Ten years. years of extra training. Ten years of extra help. 10 years of understanding your style better, everything. I think, I know I have a lot of friends that are almost 40 and they're baddies. Okay, hold on. So I'm already going to grant that women can absolutely be beautiful and attractive into their 30s and 40s and beyond. It's not the question. It's a comparative thing. As I said, because of those reasons, I think that I'll have an extra 10 years of training, extra 10 years of maintenance and looking after myself. So from 26 till now, I mean, 26 till 36, I would make the assumption that I would look better than what I do now. Absolutely. Okay. And then what about 46? I think that it would start to decline a little bit the closer I got to 50. But you would peak. So you'd be more attractive, physically attractive at 46 than you are now at 26. No, I'd be more attractive at 36 and 26 and then more attractive at 26 and 46. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Does that not make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I think on, that that's when on. you peak, yeah. You'll be more attractive at 36 than at yeah. 26. Yeah. But will you be more attractive at 46 than at 36? Probably not, no. I think that you're like a woman, like generally, it can really peak like from that 32 yeah. to 40. Yeah. When, so when do women peak? What age? What I just think? said 32 to 40, I think, is like a peak so for 36 women. 36 is the peak physical attractiveness. Of... I think so, yeah. Okay. And then going back to you, what do you think is the peak physical attractiveness age of women, if you had to say? Uh, but... 30s and 40s. Okay. Uh, going to you. Uh, you're 29. Do you think you'll be better looking at 39 than you are now? Yes. Into the mic, please. Yes. Okay. Will you be better looking at 49 than you are now? Probably not. No, I'll start declining, like she said. Okay. When do you think is the peak for uh, physical beauty in women? 30s. Okay. And do you think you're more physically attractive now at 29 than you were at 19? In some ways, but no. In other ways, no. Because I didn't, I didn't do certain things. What do you mean? Like, I just think that, like you said, like, I never, I didn't work out in my, when I was younger, so I was chubbier. When you were younger? Mm-hmm. So you're um, better looking now at 29 than you were at 19? I just took care of myself more right now. I, I took right care now. of myself now than okay. I did when I was at 19. All right. Going to you, 28, better looking at 38 or better looking now? Better looking now. And were, were you better looking at 18 or better looking now? I would say I'm better looking now, for sure. I had an awkward phase. I think women peak usually in their mid-20s, like Mm -hmm. 23, 24, 25. I think usually that's the peak. All right. What about you? You're 27. Yeah. I definitely think I'd be more attractive now than 10 years. Okay. All right. Going back to you really quick, Mm. you said that if you get work done... That you'll no. be better looking. No, 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 no. I, I, like just by process of time, I've been training for ten years. Imagine when I'm in the gym for an extra ten years. Uh, your physical fitness, how you look aesthetically, will be so much more better in ten years than what it is now. So that's why. What I, about what about face? You can't really work out your face. I think that that would then come down to how you look after yourself. Are you, like, drinking plenty of water? Are you doing skincare? Are you staying out of the sun? What are you doing to mitigate, like, wrinkles? All of that. I feel like women, well, people in general go through, like, awkward phases. I kind of feel like your 20s is an awkward phase. And then when you get into your 30s, you kind of, yeah, know your style. You've been probably working out. You know what to eat. And so that's kind of my theory behind why I think at 36 I'd be better than 26. So can I just briefly interject? I sent over, this is some new Andrew lore, the first ever dropped in a long time, and I'll drop it right here on the Whatever Podcast. So via Discord, I sent over a picture of me at 19 when I was a model. You may not know this, but (laughs) me, Andrew Wilson, I was a model. I was a hair model. I I was a model at 19 years old. I was a hair model. Some actual lore for you. Now, I'm going to have Brian pull this up so you can see how fucking delusional you are. Andrew Wilson (laughs) at 19 years old versus Andrew Wilson at 40 years old so that you can see the difference. Send it over via Discord, by the way. You got it? 
<laughs> I think men look better when they're a little older. Yeah, I think that's, so. that's, that's what I look better when they're older. Like, no, I like I, older I men. Do. I have a feeling that you look better now. I just have a feeling. Same. People have different is. tastes. I mean, it just is what it is. People my theory, though, comes from personal friends that I have that are almost 40, and I've seen photos of them at my age, yeah, and well, I think they I look am better 40, now. Not almost 40. And we're about to show the pic, and then you can just see for yourself. Is that okay, Nick? Because I got to tell you, you guys are living off in Dululu fucking land. Yeah, but you, you drink and smoke. If you're 39 years old, you're going to be as good looking as you were at 22. That's insanity. But you drink and smoke, so wouldn't you assume that you're more aged now? Do you now? think that I always drink yeah, and smoke? Yes, or what? Probably. And by the way, do you think that men can't drink and smoke and still maintain their attractiveness level? Age comes for us all, sweetheart. All right, Regardless of whether you think it's not going to come for you or... It's coming. It's coming. And guess what? Oh, yeah. The wall, wait. the wall is wow. undefeated. <laughs> it looks like a baby. I just think males are more attracted to a younger looking female where females are attracted. Yeah, generally speaking, is. very uh, generally, like that, to an older looking man, not a baby that, face. That like you were gorgeous, yeah. but you had a baby yeah, face. Exactly. Wait, so then how can you, you be like more attractive like, as time cute. goes on? Well, he's but you are basically, do I think that from 26 to 36, by logic, you would make the assumption that if I have an extra 10 years of training and looking after myself, I would therefore look better than what I do now. Yeah, but okay, let me ask you a question. All else being equal, so assuming that, I mean, you're training now, right? Yeah. Okay, so what are you gaining in 10 years? More muscle? Yeah, absolutely. You From 10 guys, years ago till now. Think, but it's not necessarily about that. If you want to get more muscle, you can reduce fat. You can get leaner. If you sure. want to get into powerlifting, you can put on weight. If you're training and you're being fit and healthy for an extra 10 years, wouldn't your body by default yeah, look better? Assuming you don't train at all, mm -hmm. but you eat healthy and your body fat percentage doesn't change at all. Although for most people as they age, they tend to gain weight. Mm -hmm. But I'll disregard that and I'll just grant that your body fat percentage stays the same. Composition, your body composition, no changes. From 30 to 40, you're saying that there's no difference, no negative difference between those years. Well, I never said that. What I said is from 26 to 36, I think I'd look better. But from 26 to 46, I think there would be a decline. So I agreed with you. Right. Because then women start to go through menopause and all of that. So then you t totally change your body and yeah. then you do start to age. So, so, yeah. so people, there's no like physical signs of aging in one's face in 10 year period. Yeah, of course there is. But you yeah, asked how my important personal are, opinion. How important is face when it comes to physical attractiveness? Yep. Pretty important. So you're not going to have any changes to your face. I never you're said that. Hit the gym for your face. <laughs> Don't you have gym you goals? Huh? Pardon? Don't you have gym goals? Yeah. So like yeah. what... If you have a gym goal now, how is it going to get better after 10 years? Well, Wouldn't if you, you have a look at the, your goal before 10 years, the beauty in the gym is it's ever, it's, a, it's always changing. Just say years. when I started at the gym, my goal was to put on weight and then I got into bodybuilding and I had a bodybuilding goal. Then I got into powerlifting and then I had powerlifting goals. Now I'm out of powerlifting and I have different goals now. So it's a forever evolution. So you actually never reach a final destination in the gym. Gross. Just having that constantly moving goal post. Do you work out? I do. Yeah. What do you do for working out? go to the gym but do you have goals there my goal is to lose weight how do you maintain that have you hit that goal no i have and not hit my goal so my goal is a desired weight that i want to get doing. to all i'm saying like if that works for her that's great but i hate the moving goal posts i i like to have one, so so one when you goal when, when you what, well, what is your that. goal like a specific number or is like a like a yeah. you look so when you get there what's going to happen i hopefully i will maintain that Wait, uh, you gotta. Hit another. It's not. It's not just maintaining. You gotta like your body's always gonna be changing. That there's always gonna be a goal. But my body is changing. Therefore, I have to change to keep my goal right. where it is. Yeah, that's what we're saying. That the goal is what we. There's always gonna. But be the goal, goal is still the same place. I'm just shooting the ball at a different angle. I guess yes. You could be morbidly obese at 26 and in the worst shape of your life, and then you diet. And then you would have a more physically attractive body by the time you're 36. But again, all else being equal, assuming that you were already in like fairly peak physical shape at 26, do you still think if you were also in peak physical shape at 36 that you're going to be more physically attractive? Great question. Total transparency, I hope so, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Depends on how I look after myself in the next 10 years. Peak physical shape. I'm granting that you're in 
peak physical shape now, and then in 10 years' time, you're also in peak physical shape. Yeah. In terms of your fitness, whatever, physique. But that's not going to undo the fact that there's changes to your skin that occur. There's changes to your face, wrinkling, et cetera. Yeah, that's That true. are just unstoppable. They are inevitable, and they're undeniable. I don't care how much, in fact, I don't care how good you, the cream you use or what you do or the minimizing of sun exposure over a 10 year period of time, there are going to be such changes to your face that regardless of all the terrible treatment you did to your skin at 26, it's not going to be, I don't think it can be substantially reversed. It's just going to progressively get worse. Oxidation. Facial, if facial attractiveness is a huge part of physical attractiveness, then how can it possibly be that you would end up better looking at 36 than at 26? Mm -hmm. That's a well. Do you want like a hypothetical, or do you want like a, uh, because sure. hypothetically, I'm again, I'm taking personal anecdotes from close personal friends that are in that age bracket, and I think about what their faces looked like at 26, and sometimes you still have a little bit of chub, or you have a baby face, and then now as they've matured as women, they've got these great jawline structures, cheekbones, and stuff because they've matured more, and so it depends, I guess, what you like. I actually right? think softer faces in women are more attractive. See. So it's up to I personal opinion. I think most men find softer faces more attractive. See, I love a jawline and I love cheekbones. But in addition so. to, fine, if I even grant that men find super, sh oh, you find, you find that more attractive in men or in women? Oh, in both. Like, think about, like, a young Johnny Depp with, like, his ripper jawline. I think it's great. And so I love when I see, Younger like, even. Johnny Depp. He looks the same. He's older now. He's not as physically attractive now. Yeah, that's true. Okay fine even for men that are inclined to find super sharp features attractive in women the i don't know what the term is what you said the the cheeks? cheekbones and jawlines yeah Just, okay whatever i don't i don't like that but fine if they're into that whatever what about wrinkles what about aging what about eye bags I don't know. Like, I don't Does think at 36, like, I feel like you're painting a picture of like at 36, you look like decrepit and old. I, and uh, like, I, again, I'm just yourself. thinking That's of not what I'm saying, but you start getting some of those things. But I'm not arguing that you she, don't. She said it would start declining, right? That's what you said? That's what I'm so can, like perplexed about. You asked me specifically from 26 to 36. If do God I think made, I will be? Let me ask you this. If God made you perfect, how can we have a nose job? I don't have a nose job, but thank you. I have my lips done, really? but that's it. Yep. You don't have a nose job? No, I don't have a nose job. No. Oh. Well, if you got me perfect, why do you have fake lips? I used to get my lips done from about 18 until 2022. And then that was the last time I got my lips done before. So I you went. thought there was some imperfection that needed to be healed or taken Yeah, care? absolutely. I was insecure about them. So you don't let them get done anymore, ever no, again? No, I haven't had my lips done since, yeah, 2022 in July. So there will be no more cosmetic surgery for you ever? No, the only thing I would love to get done is probably get this scar on my head removed, but at some point. That's it? There's yep. never going to be anything else? I don't think so. So right now, without any sort of cosmetic surgery whatsoever, without any sort of lip filler, butt lift, anything else, you believe at 39 you're going to be as attractive as you are right this second. I didn't think about it that way. I was more focusing on uh, physical appearance and thinking about in 10 years uh, what my body would look like. Uh, um, but when you put that argument there of what your face will look like, I have to agree with you, but that's not the measure I was kind of using. Isn't your physical attractiveness also based on your face? Yeah, so I'm totally agreeing with you guys. I'm just Like saying if somebody that went and splashed acid in your face, you would be less physically attractive than you are right now, probably, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if, if somebody's asking you about your physical attractiveness, aren't they taking the totality of your physical appearance? This would include your weight, your height, your facial features, all of that. And it would be combining them into this. I don't know if we could give it something like, let's say a number, for instance, <laughs> uh, you could come up with blank at 39. If you had one to 10 to choose from right now, you're seven. What are you at 39? Why do I feel like I'm getting boxed in with, like, the uncomfortability of rating people? Because um, you are getting boxed in. Good. Your logic is dumb. You deserve to get boxed in. Now answer, yeah. answer the question. 
if I said that I'm an eight right now at 26 and then if we're looking at 36 and if we're going now by the alternative factors of aging, I guess you could make the analysis that you would probably be a six by that point. What do you think you would be then by that analysis? May not. No, probably. What do you think objectively? You think at 39 years old, absent any sort of cosmetic surgery whatsoever, no lip fillers, no nose job, no whatever it is, none of that. Yeah. You work out every single day. You try to keep the, yourself in the best shape you possibly can. At 39 years old, does the number go down or does it go up? Well, if you, as I said, if you want to be super nuanced, you could probably have an increase in your body and a decrease in your face, uh, which would then probably even it out. If you're an eight now and you're saying hypothetically you'd be a six, you'd probably just land at a seven. Is that where you think you're going to be? I'd hope so. Is that where you think you're going to be, not what you hope? I'd make these. So whether you hope that or not, I'm asking you, do you think that? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. So you think you'll be an eight at 39? No, I said a seven. A seven. Yeah. And you think you're a what right now? I said an eight. An eight. So you're going to go down one point at 39? <laughs> Let's do you, what about a 42? That's only a couple of years away from 39. Hmm. Well, we said 36, not 39. Okay. 36. So so I, 42. How do I know there's 42? For some oh, no. reason, that big four zero for it women. It does, for some but I know that this is going to be really when they like hit forty. Man, it's done, right? It's well, done. Well, I know this until is until they're like thirty nine and a half years old. They're gorgeous, but the second they hit that four zero, it's over. I know what I'm getting myself into by saying this, and I totally understand, but the only people that I know that are in their 40s are literally the Kardashians, and I'm like, I know they have so much work done, but they don't well, look I'm horrible in my 40s. for 40. Like, no, not ugly. I'm literally, your, literally 40, point. showed you a picture of me at 19 years old. The standard for men at their 40s, right? I'm probably one of the better looking ones out there, and I'm a four. Why do you think that... Age for men when they have testosterone, for instance, which is the fountain of youth, and women have estrogen, which is the fountain of age. Literally, why would you ever think for a second that even though men, if they keep their testosterone high, which again, like I said, fountain of youth, why do you think that you would appear younger or better looking at that age than for right underscore, now? The underscore patriarchy donated $199.99. To the former pimp, if you would look the same in 10 or 20 years, did you recruit 40-year-olds to join your stable? Uh, we actually did have some people at the agency that were not 40, but we had people that were in their mid to late 30s, definitely. As we all know, the highest paid people and the most looked up porn is teen, barely legal and fresh teen. So I think that's just a basic obvious thing that we know for quotation. Why do you think that men would be viewing porn of really young women? I think that there's this weird complexity to be a, a complexity about innocence. To be honest with you, I think that it comes down to oh. there's a thing. Well, they're not innocent. They're they're doing porn. They're literally <laughs> not innocent at all. So but actually, coming this from is a someone that thing. well, this is coming it has from purely to do it's just an purely to do with their looks. Getting fucked by three of those guys over there, Brian. Come on, what's wrong? It's, it's I disagree with that thing. because as I literally saw conversations with subscribers and saw this phenomenon, what happens when they're dressed in the school dresses? They're this, they're that. What is the underlying theme here? It's the fact that there's this weird girl next door phenomenon about the innocence of these girls, but there's this weird fantasy. No, literally the seeing it. Is true. What's going on is is that these are 25 year old women who dress this way so that they appear younger so that they look more attractive to men because men value younger women because they're hotter isn't that what's actually going on I don't know. As I said, my personal experience from literally working at an agency and seeing these conversations is I disagree so for instance, if the LARP is, I'm 25 years old, but I'm dressing like I'm a schoolgirl, what you're doing is you're giving the presentation that you're younger than 25 years old, right? But if you okay. zoom out on that, so, so let's extrapolate on that, So if men are into that fantasy, though. isn't that showing that men are into youth? They want young women, right? Because they want to fuck them. That's why. <laughs> they want to have sex with them because that's what makes but the babies. But then what's the differentiation? But women, what's the differentiation? Young, women. So here, I'll explain it to you. Young, fertile women can have lots and lots of babies. So from a biological standpoint, why is it that a man would want to have sex? Why would a man, for instance, think young women beautiful? They think that because from an evolutionary standpoint, you would assume that the younger women 
are going to have far more babies than older women. So younger women look more beautiful to man because then man wants to have sex with younger women, thus make more babies, right? Look, to be honest with you, I understand that perspective. I think it's actually quite simplistic. I think that the subscriber and OnlyFans relationship is way more, I personally think, complicated than that. I don't think it's as simple as a guy looks at a young girl and thinks I'm going to have babies with her. I think that when there's such an then oversaturation... Why are attracted to younger women? I think that I just told you my theory from my personal experience is that there's an infatuation with innocence. And that's why... Uh, not an infatuation with can have babies. So why do you think attractiveness exists But why would with? men watch why do men and women need to be attracted to each other? Why do they need to want to have sex with each other? Why? If you're like, I understand the procreation aspect of it. I need you to answer the it. question. I, I said, to answer the question. Because of procreation. But what we're talking about here in this very specific topic is the fact that men are not watching porn because they think that they're going to impregnate a woman. They're watching porn for other reasons. The only reason you're attracted to woman and woman's attracted to man is because without that attractiveness, there's no baby. That's why the attractiveness exists to begin with. Therefore, if you were to look at it from a perspective of what men find attractive, why wouldn't men then go for younger women? Why wouldn't they think that was more attractive? Yeah, look, two opposing opinions, and I totally disagree with you from my personal experience, and you think A, I think B. Do you think more men are jerking off to 80-year-old, you know, barely legal teen and 20, 25-year-old porn? Well, I think that it's ridiculous to try and make such an exaggerated Answer context. the question. Now, answer the question. Do you think more men are jerking off to 80-year-old women, 70-year-old women, 60-year-old women, 50-year-old women, 40-year-old women, or 20-year-old women? Well, there is fantasies of that, but no, I think that to make this extreme comparison of 80-year-olds and 19-year-olds is just ridiculous. Answer the question. That's my answer. Okay, do you, so I'll ask again. I'm going to ask until you answer it. I don't care yeah, if you Yeah, because I understand you're trying to box me into so, saying so the younger here, so that here, you can try and make your point, but your, like, example is ridiculous. You know, you, is that an answer to the question? Is it an answer to the question if you ask me if I'm six feet tall and I say margarine hat? Is that an answer to your question? No. No. Now, I'm going to ask the question again. Are more men out there jerking off to 20-year-old women... Or are they jerking off more to 40, 30, 50, 60, and 70-year-old women? But of course the answer is younger. Why? Your theory is because of procreation. My theory is because of innocence. Well, wait a second. Women in their 30s, right, can still be innocent, can't they? Again, if you want to extrapolate on that, why is it the younger the better, though? They are attracted to the thing that make the baby, or they wouldn't have the attraction to begin with, right? You would not have attraction to woman if woman couldn't make baby. That wouldn't make any sense. Why would attractiveness even exist external to need to make baby? Why would that even exist? Look, as I said, I think you're simplifying a really complex problem. I, you think I'm simplifying a really complex problem? Yeah. Okay. I think that you are overcomplexifying a really simple problem. Does that sound like a good argument to you? Potentially. So potentially it sounds like a good argument to you that you say, well, that's an overly simplistic analysis. And I say, well, that's an overly complex analysis. That's not an argument. Tell me why it would be that you, are, attractiveness only exists, period, for the purpose of procreation. And yet, when men are jerking off to the type of pornography in the age group where you are the most fertile, you can't make the link that these two things are connected. I'm not denying that the link is there. I'm saying in right. the specific context of what we're talking about, and we're talking about the consumption of pornography. Well, I don't think that attractiveness even exists absent the baseline of procreation. And I think that if you're looking at 20, 22, 23, 24, 25 year old women who are in their most fertile years, of course, are the most attractive. Those are the women who are going to be able to give you the most but we amount weren't of talking children. About, but we weren't talking about 20, 22, 23. We were specifically saying teen, barely legal, and fresh teen. So there's a differentiation here. Oh, so only for the purpose of TOS am I not able to dive into this. But of course, at 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, yes, of course, those are very fertile women. Why wouldn't men want that? When you say innocence, when you say they're into it because of innocence, innocence meaning what? I'm a virgin 18-year-old, meaning I'm the most likely to bear your genetic offspring, correct? 
look, yeah, I guess you could see it from that perspective, absolutely, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think heavy stuff, guys. So, I mean, I, I guess better looking at 36 <laughs> versus now at 26. Yep, let's just go with that. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I mean, aging, you, you know about the whole aging thing? Like, people. <laughs> I'm, I'm familiar with that phenomenon. Well, yeah, but it changes, like, your physical appearance. So, wait, hold on. Before I get to that, you said better looking in 10 years, or did you walk back? What did I say? I said, oh, in 10 years? Uh, yeah, better looking in 10 years, yes. Okay. I'm curious, since you guys rated yourselves 10s, mm -hmm. How can you possibly be tens now if you're going to be better looking in 10 years' time? Well, when I talked about the totality of it, I s said a 10, or, and then I retracted and said a 7. So if yeah, I said now a we're 7, back now looks. we're back to going back we're, up. We're back to looks. And you, you said that... I said from other people's perspectives, I'm probably seen as a 7 or lower. So in 10 years, okay, like so we talked about, back. there's a... There's a right. So you're said walking back statistics. to ten thing. Going to you, you said you were a ten, but you said you'd also be better looking in ten years' time. So how can you be a ten now if you will be better looking in ten years' time? I'm gonna take care of myself. Like she, everything she said, I second that. Right, but if you're better, gonna be better looking in ten years' time, how can you be a ten now? We'll be a ten point five. Yeah, that doesn't exist. So do you want to engage in good faith and actually answer the question? Okay, well, we're going to move off a little bit from this rating thing, but I kind of will actually give you reasons for why we bring this up and why we offer pushback. So the reality is, in the dating marketplace, is that uh, a lot more women are delusional about their self-assessment in the dating marketplace than men are. Because we as men, if I step to a girl and this can be just off of looks, if I step to a girl and absent like insane levels of charisma or status or money or in any case, if I'm a guy who's a seven and I step to a woman who's a 10, I don't get anything from her. I don't get a date. I don't get, I certainly don't get casual sex. So we as men face rejection immediately. We face it on the front end. Men face rejection immediately. Whereas women, if you're like an average girl and you kind of make yourself sexually available to a guy who's outside of your league, he'll fuck you. Well, sure. He'll have sex with you. He will never, he, very good chance he'll never give you commitment. He probably won't treat you that well or treat you how you feel like you deserve to be treated. This is what, what, where we uh, hear these complaints about fuckboys from, from women. Frankly, you're fucking men out of your league. So if you're chasing after these men who are more attractive than you, who are eights, nines, tens, and you're a five, six, seven, you can sleep with men who are more attractive than you. You're going to get jaded. You might actually become delusional and think, well, because I can sleep with that guy, that's my league. I'm an average girl, but I can go get me an NFL player. Let's remove status from it. He's just a really good looking guy. Mm -hmm. As women, you have sexual access to men. So long as you make yourself sexually available to them, you have access to those men who are out of your league. So what ends up happening? Because you have sexual access to them, you think that the men who are actually in your league who will commit to you, who will give you a ring, you think you're settling for them. So you either won't give them a chance, or if you do give them a chance, you'll secretly still be pining for those really attractive men who you can have sex with, but who will never ever commit to you. And so what ends up happening, if you do end up with one of these men who you deem as out of your league, but is actually your league, you're gonna resent him. You're gonna be secretly pining for that really hot dude for the course of the relationship. It's gonna create turmoil in your relationship because you feel like you're settling for him. You're gonna probably mistreat him in ways that you wouldn't treat these guys who you have sexual access to, but you'll never get commitment from. But really, probably the most ultimate thing is you'll just disregard the men who are actually prepared to give you commitment, who are in your league, but because you're able to get sexual access from these men, you just think you're a 10 because you can fuck a guy who's a 10, but you're not a 10. The men who are in your league are the men who give you commitment and relationship and a ring, not the men who you're able to fuck. 
If I can sleep with a girl, there's a very high probability I can get her in a relationship. Very high probability. But for you, is it a given if you sleep with a guy that you can definitively get him in a relationship? It's not so clear. Ladies, this is why you don't, we, we don't have sex with everybody and just wait to our husband. We'll eliminate all the F boys. The only one that You already did, us. though. And look where it got me. Thinking you're a 10? No, I'm not talking about that. Because you can, without, no matter what you think, it's like, if you're not, with your argument, you're saying, if I'm thinking that these guys that are way out of my league, I, I have a chance with them, well, I'll never, I'll never mess with them because I'm never going to have sex with them, so I'm never going to be caught up in that whole thing. Well, I mean, you could even do this within the framework of not having sex. You could just chase men who are outside of your league and curve and reject men who are actually in your league. Mm. Yeah. You will chase, though, if he's attractive enough. Mm. Yeah. No. I mean, it's quiet, but I mean. I mean, shouldn't you want to chase a guy? No. Why would you want to chase a guy? Pursue a guy, like, like in the symbiotic, like, at the same energy as him, yeah, but not go chase if he's not reciprocating yeah, But what if he's it. your perfect guy? He's the perfect Christian. He has all these standards that you but really if he's like. Not, if, you're he's not not re- why, if he's not reciprocating, why would I go after that? Yeah, but that? how does he know that you actually want him? Well, I want a man that would pursue me, and I would give that signaling. We already talked about this. Well, I mean, I'll just ask the table. Like, how confident do you feel that... If you sleep with a man, how confident are you that you can, with near certainty, get him into a relationship in all instances? Percent. I'm not. 100% for me. It's very rare. That's why. That's a question for the panel if you guys want to answer it. Women choose when you have sex. Men choose when you're in a relationship. Well, why is it then? If I mean, if what I'm saying is so crazy and out there... Mm -hmm. It seems like women complain more about having slept with a man Mm -hmm. but never ending up in a commitment with him. Women just complain more in general. That's the thing. Sure. But it's, I mean, I hear men complaining about not even Mm -hmm. being able to get laid. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. But I don't really hear this complaint more from men. Like, I hear this complaint of fuckboys from women. Oh, I can't believe I slept with her. She yeah. wasn't willing to commit to me. I think that has to do with like the culture of young women now, the college age women and how loose they are. It's just true. I think that's become way more common that women just sleep around and they party and they hook up with whatever hot guy will take them. Yeah, they complain. I've seen it and I witnessed it myself. So I know what you're saying. I completely agree, but I think it's the society, the culture, the feminist sexual empowerment movement that's turned into this. And yeah, men will hook up with the chick because he wants to, and it doesn't mean he wants to be with her Right, easily. so yeah. this is the final component of my argument here mm-hmm. about when it comes to the rating thing, why it's important to have a reasonable and accurate self-assessment mm-hmm. of your own physical attractiveness. For women to have casual sex with a man, typically, She's going to actually seek out a really attractive guy to Mm -hmm. do that with. Whereas men will have casual sex with women that just based on their looks alone, we would never be in a relationship with her just based on her looks. So that's where people will get into trouble. So Mm -hmm. a guy will sleep with a girl, but based on her looks, we'll never be in a relationship with her, but he'll sleep with her. That's rarely the case for women. Mm -hmm. For a woman, just to have a casual encounter with a guy, the guy has to be at least attractive enough for you to be in a relationship with him. But preferably, you're going to want the guy who's really, really hot and attractive if you are inclined to have that casual sexual encounter. Whereas men are far less discerning Mm -hmm. with casual sex, sex, excuse me, sexual encounters. They'll go down. For a casual sexual encounter. Of course, yeah. They'll, they'll date, go to they'll, the alley, yeah. They'll get with a girl who's unattractive because yeah. they want pussy. You know, 
I think what you're doing is you're just accurately pointing out the differences between men and women, the way they deal with sex. And, and I guess it's good just to have this conversation and point it out so people can become more self-aware because people don't know. But it sets up women for eventual and inevitable disappointment. You're right. You're right. Yeah. They think, I can, wait, I can hook up with that guy. Mm-hmm. What? I feel really bad because I'm not getting commitment from him. Yeah. Because she yeah. thinks... I was able to have sex with him. We must be equivalents. Why does he want to commit to me? What's wrong with me? You're outside of your league. Yeah. You're outside of your league as a woman. Being a slut has become very... Can I say that word? Sure. Okay. That's whatever. Oh, you have a sweatshirt that said so. Yep. Being a slut has become very normalized and, you know, you're actually cooler and you're more in with the young women if you're loose. And yeah, with that comes more disappointment. So you're right. I mean, can't disagree with you. And I think it's good to bring it up and talk about it because I think so many women have become so delusional about reality. And I don't mean that to be mean to sound like, oh, I think I'm smarter or better. I just think that's the reality. And if you don't change your path, you're going to screw yourself. People always say, oh, everyone's always been sexual and degenerate. It's just now it's more open in the air, but it's always been the same. It's not always been the same. Of course, people have always been freaks behind closed doors, but now it's celebrated. I know different cultures have different things. Slut walk is like almost nothing, but now like pride parades, it's like complete degeneracy and absolutely nothing to do with what they say it has to do with. Yeah, it's gotten worse. So women have gotten worse and they're getting lost in the plot and they're upset 